Beth is in Detroit. Hi, Beth. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm a little bit starstruck, so I'll try to get through this call. George does nervous. that. That's what people. it is. I was going to say. George I was like, does Beth, that. You're George okay. does that. Okay. People get that way when they're with him. Oh. Well, I am a longtime listener, first time caller, and I appreciate you taking my call. I, um, My husband and I are just kind of getting our ducks in a row a little bit late, but mm-hmm. still doing it. Um, and I'm interested in learning about a ladybird deed. Mm-hmm. And if you know anything about it or can help me to know if that's the right way for us to go. Okay. It's simply a life estate, and they, people nicknamed okay. it Ladybird because Lyndon Johnson did it with his wife. And so they nicknamed okay. it Ladybird Johnson, so they nicknamed it a Ladybird deed. But all it means is is the that, for instance, uh, if you all had kids from a pre, if your husband had kids from a previous marriage, he wanted to leave the house to the kids. He could leave you a life estate, meaning you're allowed to live there, and, and and the kids can't do anything with the property as long as you're alive. Okay. It essentially clouds the title, uh, meaning that you you mm-hmm. are in control of the. They can't refinance it. There's not really anything they can do with it uh, without your permission. If you if you are given the life estate, that would be an example of how it's utilized. How are you talking about using it? Well, I mostly was. I just wanted to make it easy for them when we're not here anymore to just take you know do whatever they want with it, sell it. Take oh, it I over, wouldn't do that. Then. You know, if I wouldn't do that. Okay, I just leave it to how you. you and it? I just what I do is do mirror image wheels, and a mirror image wheel says that if uh, you die, it all goes to him. If he dies, it all goes to you. And if you both die, you both are in agreement on where it's all going. I see. What about a Medicare protection? You know how they go back so many years if you... Medicaid. I've yeah, heard. not Medicare. Medi- oh, Medicaid. Oh, forgive me. Okay. Yeah. Well, that and that's, probably would... They yeah. go, if you want to go into a welfare nursing home, you want to get the property out of your name five years before, but I don't recommend welfare nursing homes. That's what, Medicaid is welfare. You. Medicaid's welfare. Okay, definitely no. I yeah. wouldn't plan to be there. Okay. And so you I'm need you need not. long-term care insurance and money. Long-term care insurance and money. She okay, wrote that down. Like that. Yeah. Do, do you, are you 60? Are you 60? 62 and my husband's almost 64. Perfect. Do you ha- you don't have long-term care insurance to cover nursing home or in-home care? Well, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't. That's okay. It's okay. No problem. You know, what's your what's Charles net worth? How much money have you got? Probably uh, between the house and, oh gosh, I was a stay-at-home mom for a long time, so I did not, we are not totally doing wonderfully, but we have our home that's paid for that might be worth about 300 We've got probably about 150 in the bank, and then we've got a couple hundred in um, uh, IRAs. Perfect. You need long-term care insurance. Go to RamseySolutions.com and click on ELP for yeah. long-term care and get with one of our ELPs, and they'll help you get it going. Because here's the scenario that usually happens where you are. If you had $3 million, if you told me that, in your retirement, I would have told you to self-insure because you could pay for the nursing home because the average nursing home stays not but 2.3 years. So you can pay right. for the nursing home or in-home care. But what? But 75% of the ladies outlive their husbands. And so right. what normally happens is he passes away, or he, he goes into a nursing home, uses up your three hundred grand on the nursing home, and then passes away and leaves you broke with a paid-for house. We don't want that. So we're going to get insurance to cover the nursing home. That's long-term care insurance. That's all you need, and then you need a will that leaves the house to the kids for both of you. That's all you need. Dave, what's the magic number about 60? We tell people get long-term care insurance at 60. It's, it's a statistical thing, uh, a probability thing. And the probability of utilizing nursing home services prior to age 60 is less than one half of 1%. And it's weird. Almost every day after you're 60, it goes up dramatically. I mean, it's like a hockey stick curve, right? Wow. And so, um, you know, you, you need that. Now, those of you that are baby step millionaires and have got $5 million, you're probably not going to go to a nursing home. You're probably going to hire 24-hour in-home care which is not a whole lot more than a nursing home bill, actually. Uh, and, and you can get, you know, be in your environment. and c- That's what I'll do, in other words, in my situation. If something happened to You'll Sharon, miss out on bingo yeah, night. No question, yeah. And we're going to take care of this and um, be in my own environment, be in control of the whole situation more. Uh, and, and one of us will be, whichever one is functioning. And, and, but, you know, you can do that for, a, for more than a nursing home bill. But if you've got $5 million, you know, you're still not going to burn through even 
three or four hundred, five hundred thousand bucks of it, you can afford care it. of that person, and you're still going to be okay. So you self-insure, in other words, through the final days of care routine, if you've got substantial wealth. But where she's got the three hundred k, that's the exact number they're going to burn through probably. Yeah. So they definitely need to get long-term care insurance. She's right on that bubble. And uh, and no, you're not going to be you're not even going to be eligible for Medicaid, no matter what you do. Because the only way you get eligible for Medicaid is you have to prove that you're broke, which means you moved all of your assets out of your name in order to get welfare. And that's technically welfare fraud is what that is. So um, some people call it elder care law, but it's, uh, it's, it's immoral is what it is. So, no, we don't recommend that, that yeah. you act like you're broke so the government pays for stuff for you. I don't, don't recommend that at all. Mm. But what a good question. That's yeah. very cool. So, But the life estate, that's how, or the Lady Bird Deed, that's such a cool name. Yeah, you know, I never heard Lady Bird Deed until the last few years. It's kind of, they, people started naming it that more lately. I grew up around the real estate business. We always just call it life estate, life estate. That's really all it is. got to give it a snappy name. That way yeah. people will do it. Yeah. But you have, you know, as long as you're alive, you have access to the property if you leave life estate. Does that create any weird relational pieces with the kids and whoever's course, living of there? Of course. Of course. Because they want you to die at that point. Yeah, you're you're kind pre- of. Yeah, you're going. Would you please? That's awkward. Out? Especially, you know, it's like stepmom, right? Because this kid's from a previous marriage, so we're like, would she die and get out of the way? I want the house. You know? Yikes! So, but you could actually you could actually sell, a, you know, you go, okay, I'll agree to everybody to sell it, but I get some money. Mm. You could do that if you hold the life estate. Right? You don't technically uh, have to, but I mean, if you want me to get out of the way, you got to pay me. I like that. Prior to death. All right. So there you go. Gives you protection and gives you a place to live.